when we dissolve a solute in a solvent that is if we add salt to water salt is the solute water is the solvent and we stir it we get the final solution so there are different types of solutions which are possible we have sand dissolved in water we have aqueous copper sulfate solution and milk these are the three different kinds of solutions and we'll filter them now so first we filter sand dissolved in water you see that clear water is collected in the flask and sand is left on the filter paper next we filter aqueous copper sulfate solution on filtering the entire copper sulfate solution is obtained in the flask there is no filtrant or residue on the filter paper now we'll filter milk again the entire milk is collected in the flask and there is no residue left on the filter paper so these are the three different kinds of solutions one of these is a suspension the properties of a suspension are that it is heterogeneous it is the components of a suspension they can be separated by filtration and it is not stable by not stable we mean that if we leave the solution undisturbed for some time the insoluble solid settles at the bottom so which out of the three sand dissolved in water aqueous copper sulfate solution and milk which out of the three do you think is a suspension yes sand dissolved in water is a suspension because we see that it is heterogeneous its composition is not same throughout it is not stable that is if we leave it undisturbed for some time the sand settles at the bottom and we can separate this sand using a filter paper so this sand dissolved in water is a suspension so the suspension or sand dissolved in water satisfies all the three properties now let's look at another type of solution that is aqueous copper sulfate solution which is a true solution now what are the properties of a true solution a true solution is always homogeneous so when we look at aqueous copper sulfate solution we see that it is same throughout since it is uniform in composition throughout so it is homogeneous it is also clear and transparent as we saw in case of aqueous copper sulfate solution the components of a true solution cannot be separated by filtration when we filtered aqueous copper sulfate solution there was no residue on the filter paper also it is stable when we say it's stable if we leave aqueous copper sulfate solution undisturbed for a very long time we do not see any insoluble solid settling at the bottom so aqueous copper sulfate solution is a true solution now what kind of solution do you think is milk well milk it looks homogeneous homogeneous because as we look at it it looks the same throughout it has the uniform composition but if you take some some of this milk and observe under a microscope you will see that there it has varying composition throughout it has different particles like fats and so on when we observe this milk under a microscope we observe that there are different particles in different proportions of milk so even though it looks homogeneous it is actually a heterogeneous mixture so such a mixture which looks homogeneous but it actually a heterogeneous mixture the components of which cannot be separated by filtration there was no residue when we filtered milk and again it is stable if we leave it undisturbed for some time we do not see any insoluble component settling down so such a solution is known as a colloidal solution so milk in this case is a colloidal solution we have chalk powder dissolved in water what kind of a solution is that is it a true solution suspension or a colloidal solution we know that chalk powder is insoluble in water since it is insoluble it can be separated by filtration it is also not stable 
as if we leave it for some time undisturbed, the chalk powder settles at the bottom and this mixture is a heterogeneous mixture. So such a mixture which has these properties is a suspension. Now we have two solutions. We have aqueous copper sulfate solution and we have milk. To us, both are homogeneous looking, both have the same composition throughout. We know milk looks homogeneous but, is, but it is actually a heterogeneous mixture. But when we are looking at it, to us both are homogeneous. Both cannot be separated by filtration, the components of aqueous copper sulfate solution and milk, they cannot be separated by filtration and they are also stable. Both of them are stable. So how do we actually distinguish between a true solution and a colloidal solution? The first way to distinguish between the two is by using the property that true solutions are clear and transparent. If you take your hand and place it behind this beaker, you will be able to see it. Or if you take a colored paper, place it behind this beaker, you will be able to see the paper. But if you take your hand or the colored paper behind this glass, you will not be able to see it. This is because true solutions are clear and transparent, whereas colloidal solutions are not. So this is one property which we can use to distinguish between the two. Another very important property which helps us in distinguishing between the two is something which you must have observed in a dark room. If you have a dark room and you open a ventilator or a small window, you see the path taken by the light rays. Why do you see this path which is taken by the light rays? This is because there are tiny dust particles in the air. As the sun's rays strikes these dust particles, the light rays scatter. As they are scattered, they, they take a wider area now, so we can see the path taken by the light rays. So the air or the dust particles which are present in air, they scatter the sun's rays and so the path of the rays becomes visible. And this effect is known as Tyndall effect. Tyndall effect is the effect of scattering of, of a beam of light. When the beam of a light is scattered by some particles which are present in the medium, their path becomes visible and this scattering of beam of light is known as Tyndall effect. This is also the effect which you observe in dense forests. In dense forests, again, you see the path which is taken by the rays of the sun. Why is this so? This is because in forests, there are tiny droplets of water. As the sun's rays strike these droplets of water, their path is scattered. As they are scattered, their path becomes visible. So again, it is the Tyndall effect which makes the path of the sun's rays visible. How does this Tyndall effect help in distinguishing a true solution from a colloidal solution? Say we have two beakers, one of them contains a true solution and one a colloidal solution. How can we distinguish the two? We bring a torch. As we switch on the torch, you see that in one of the beakers, the path of the light rays becomes visible. This is because we know that some particles in a colloidal solution, as they are big, they scattered the light rays. As they are scattered, their path becomes visible. So this is a colloidal solution. A true solution cannot scatter the light rays. This is because the particles of a true solution are very small. They do not have the property to scatter the light rays. And hence, Tyndall effect helps us in distinguishing a colloidal solution from a true solution. So we can use this property when we have two solutions, we bring a laser beam or a torch. You observe that the path of the laser beam becomes visible in one of the solutions. This means this is a colloidal solution. And the solution in which the path does not become visible is the true solution. So Tyndall effect is the scattering of a beam of light by the colloidal particles which are present in a colloidal solution. Since the colloidal particles are bigger than the particles of a true solution, they have the tendency to scatter the light rays and hence the path becomes visible. So Tyndall effect can be used
to distinguish a true solution from a colloidal solution. So we see the different types of solutions, that is the suspension, a true solution and a colloidal solution.